evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about circles that are not vertical and not horizontal, they're in between. And these are the ones that you stereotypically see. So what I have here is I have a car that is on a velodrome. So it's on a bank surface and it's coming out and coming back in and coming back around again. So this is the circular motion it's doing. Good example of it. Imagine the string wasn't there. This is the car. It's sort of doing that kind of shape there. The mass of the car is 10 kilograms. The um, radius of the velodrome is uh, 10 meters. And I want to know what my velocity will be, my tangential velocity at any point. And this is my diagram here. So the first thing you need to do, of course, with any diagram is to label any forces that you have on it. So of course I have the weight going downwards here. And so that's 10 times 9.81, which is 98.1 newtons. And I have this reaction force here. And it's this reaction force that has actually got some component working into the centre of the circle, which is here. Okay. And as usual, I'm going to label things. So I label my solid forces, my real forces, with a dotty line. I'm actually going to label this as Rx and this is our y okay and i need to find a relationship between this rx and the rx i know that my rx is my centripetal force it is the only force or a component thereof that's working towards the center of the circle so i know that is going to be my mv squared over r so i know that rx is r cos 30 I know my Ry is R sine 30. I know also that this object is not moving up or down. It is staying in a nice constant circle. So I know that I must be in equilibrium going up or down. So I know that my Ry must equal my weight. So all of a sudden, R sine 30 is 98.1. Now all of a sudden I can actually find out what this reaction force is. So 98.1 divided by sine, oops, sine 30 is 196.2 newtons. So my reaction force is 196.2. And I'm actually going to label it on here. Okay. And now I'm actually going to put that into my Rx. Here. So answer cos 30. I get an answer of 169.9 newtons. Okay, so I've got 169.9 newtons, which does actually make sense because. I haven't got as much in the y because this reaction force is actually working far more in the x. So now I know what Rx is, I can then use my circular motion for me because this component is the force or a component thereof that is working towards the centre of the circle. So I know 169.9 equals 10 times v squared over 10. Okay, so 10 divided by 10, of course, is 1 which means that v squared is 169. So I'm going to square root that v, and I get my velocity is 13 metres per second. Okay. Now, this is why I was saying in my previous video about horizontal circles, well, they can't actually exist, because this reaction force is the thing that's causing the centre of the circle. If the bank was getting more and more sloped, okay, so it's actually getting more and more tilted, less and less of this reaction force will work towards the centre of the circle. To the point where you're at completely at 90 degrees here, that there is no reaction force. And the same goes to string. Tension is a reaction. At the moment, this string has no tension in it. When I put the weight down, a tension appears. And you can kind of see this at the top here of horizontal vertical circles, which I'll be talking about in my next video, about how the tension as it goes round actually starts to change. Okay. So this object here 
is at a horizontal. You can do this for all sorts of things. So I can actually do this for a lasso. So let's take this here. And let's have a lasso. Okay, so here's my rope and it's got some tension in it and it's on a lasso that is going like this. So sort of the ones that the sort of cowboys would use, etc. Okay. And I'm going to say that this knot here has a... Actually, no, we're not going to say this word. I'm, I'm saying I'm actually going to put a tension. I'm actually going to be pulling this rope with a tension of 40 newtons. And it is at 60 degrees to the centre of the circle. The radius of the lasso is one metre. And I want to know how fast. So I want to know how many revolutions per second. So I want to find omega so i need to find the part of the force that's working to the center of the circle again so this is tension this is tx and this is ty okay now <clears throat> here as you can see i'm not really bothered because i actually do know what t is so i don't need to do any balancing or acceleration here but what you can see is that because there will be a component in the y-axis the lasso would rise up and you do see that with sort of cowboys and people who treat you can actually see it rising up because there is a component going up so let's find out let's find tx because i know that's the force or the component thereof working into the center of the circle so tx is 40 cos oops uh 60. so that's going to be if i just put that into my calculator 40 cos 60 and that's going to be 20 okay so that's 20 newtons going to the center of my circle and that is my resultant force so using f equals m omega squared r okay and this is where i actually need to know the mass of the rope i need to know the mass of the object i'm spinning in the circle so i'm going to say my mass is going to be one kilogram ropes don't really weigh that much but i'm using it as an example here so let's actually say here that I've got 1 times so 20 omega squared times by 1. So I know that omega squared is going to be 20 because 1 times 1 is 1. Omega would be square root of 20, which is 4.47. Okay, so these are all angles that have forces that are working at separate angles. Okay, so this is a not quite vertical, not quite horizontal, working in both axes. This one here was just using the straightforward, I know what the tension was, and working out the angular velocity. This one here was an interesting one where I had to look for, I only had the weights, all I had. But by drawing labels and understanding about equilibrium, I'm able to work out what this reaction force is, and therefore work out what is the force acting to the centre of the circle. And that is so, uh, basically um, sort of circles at an angle. <laughs>